So, Gianna, for this last part of your video lesson, I'd like you to get out your theory book. And I believe that I assigned you pages 38 and 39. So when you come back, I'll take a look at those. Uh, we're basically working with the 1, 4, and 5 chords. <clears throat> Make sure if you haven't done your harmonizing for the minuet and G, do it in pencil. Because what I'd like you to do is try to use the use your knowledge of the chords to choose a chord first before you try to play it. So what we do is instead of just trying to sound it out by ear, we try to use the theory we know to decide what chord. I'm on page 39 now, so if you have a D and a G, you know, what chord in the key of G uses a D and a G? Well, that's going to be your one chord, right? But when you know that in the key of G, your five chord is D, so if you have a D F A, <clears throat> that would be using a five. So you look and see what of the of because you got a lot of passing tones in this with the that what I mean is like you got <clears throat> actually this is a famous melody. And they're just giving you an exercise to do on it. So try to see what you can do with harmonizing that. Play through it then. That's when you use your eraser. If you don't like the way the chord you chose sounds, then I would do some work by ear. But anyway, what I'd like to do is assign you pages 40 and 41. And 40 is another one of those where if you just did the activity that I showed you in the lesson book with canoeing, you have to try to visualize what those chords look like blocked. And you might just want to label them like we did before. So you use your capital, capital letters for your 1, 4, and 5 chord. And then I think all of these are the key of G, looks like. But you need to decide is it your choices are going to be from 1 to 5, 7, 4 to 1, 5, 7 to 1, or 4 to 5. Or, oh no, it's 4 to 4. Um, so utilize that idea I talked to you about. Try to visualize you. So use your pencil and just take the, the, t the two notes after the first note of the chord. You might want to loop the chord so you can see the three notes of the chord first. Slide the two top ones over and figure out what the chords are. Analyze those. Then you'll, your matching will be really simple to do. Uh, usually sight reading, we do, it's one where you don't practice it, you just play once. And we could really do that part together. But I would like to do the part that's ear training. And I don't think we've ever done this before. So you might need to push pause. And not that we haven't done some ear training. I know mom tends to do some of those with you. But I thought today I would. And I would like you to um, bring it with you so that I can check them and see. Because what I'm going to do is mix up the, the samples to figure out if you can hear the difference between the chords. It's one of those things we piano players have to learn how to do is be able to discern, is it a one chord, a four chord, a five chord? And you, and you get pretty good at recognizing them. And then the nice thing is that once you can recognize them, it makes it really easy to play by ears. So like if you're doing a lead sheet or something, you can almost tell which chord you need to play. So it's a really great tool for a piano player to be able to do. So what I like to do is we're going to be in the key of C. Um, uh, let's see, some of them are in the key of G though. I will tell you if you're going to be in the key of C or the key of G. Sound good? And then it's important, if you would please, to, because when I, when I work with theory in people's songs and we analyze chords underneath, I will do the same thing that they're asking you to do. I will put first time with my board's falling apart. I'll put first of all what key we're in. And in this case we're using a capital letter because a major key is always um, with a capital letter and minor keys are with lowercase letters. So if we're in the key of C for instance, I'm going to use a capital C. And then I put a colon. And so say if I was doing a C chord, that's not going to work. Pretend that I'm on a staff. I got a C, E, G. And then I would go to the 5, 7. I would, I would go like this. Pretend I have 5, 7 notes there. Huh. 
But this tells me that in the key of C, I know I have a C chord and I have a G7 chord. So that's why I put the capital letter first with the two colons. So if I say it's key of G, you write a capital G and the colon, okay? All right, so let's do, and there are four of these. I'll play them twice, and then you can rewind if you need to, all right? So this first one will start with the key of C. So put your capital C in your colon, and then you have to decide what chord progression does it sound like I'm doing. Okay, so here we are, key of C. Again, we're in the key of C. And let's stay in the key of C for number two. So write your capital letter C. And you know, if it feels like it's too fast, I'm making a video, but you can always pause and go back, okay? Number two is in the key of C. And here are your chords. reason why I'm not giving the answers, oftentimes when I do these video theory lessons, I'll give you the answers right away so you know whether you've got it right, but I kind of want to just quiz you a little bit to see where we are at this point with what you can hear, and then we'll do a check again somewhere down the road and see how the, the skill is advancing and getting better, okay? All right, now we're going to move to the key of G. So you're going to put a capital G with your colon and listen for the chords. again. All right. Hopefully you're starting to feel more comfortable with these. Here's your last one, number four, still in the key of G. Okay, so you have four chords you need to write down for me. do that one again because I, well, I think you've had four chords, but we'll do it one more time. Kind of just leaves you hanging, doesn't it? I feel like we need to go back to the, back to the tonic to make it feel like we've come home, we are at rest, so. All right, bring that with you. I'll check it when you come on your next lesson, which should hopefully be Tuesday, I believe. So again, if you have any questions on how to do these, and you may not have time to get to all of this um, before your next lesson, but they'll be there and you can work on them as we go along. So anyway, hope you have fun with that and I will look forward to seeing you soon.